In these next four and a half minutes, we want you to take a long, hard look at Senator Bob Dole. We'll start with what comes naturally to the average politician, shaking hands. To most men in public office, it's a way of life. To Bob Dole, it doesn't come easy. Not since the day he lost the use of his right hand. It hasn't always been that way. Bob Dole not only shook hands when he was a kid, but won numerous sports letters and awards. He fought his first battles on the fields of Russell High, moved down to the University of Kansas, where as a pre-med student, he won his letters in basketball and football. But then the war broke out. Bob Dole signed up. He was 20. At Camp Breckenridge, he weighed in at a trim 192 pounds. But then one cold morning, as he was leading his platoon against a German machine gun emplacement, he left his shell hole to save a wounded radio man. The machine gun and fragment wounds he received cost him 39 months in army hospitals. They gave him the bronze star with cluster, but they couldn't give him back the use of his right hand. With med school out of the question, Bob Dole turned to law and eventually to public life. In 1960, he was elected to the House. And as the son of a grain elevator operator, he asked to be on the prestigious Ag Committee. Next year, he'll be the number one Republican on that committee. That's why Gerald Ford asked him to speak for the farm states at the summit conference on inflation. And like Americans, generally, farmers are paying more for everything, everything they buy. You can't run a farm, as Senator Bellman knows on my left, uh, being a bona fide farmer, by the seat of your pants anymore. Inflation compounded by serious shortages of the things he needs to do the job is the farmer's biggest problem, a problem government did the most to create. We feel it's a problem the government must do the most to solve. But Bob Dole, in the 14 years he's been representing Kansas, has proved he's been more than just the voice of the farmer. Just ask Carl Kendrick, an aircraft worker, who will tell you about the time Bob Dole won a lot of friends in Wichita. And I don't know about anyone else, but I do know that Senator Dole has always gone to bat and done his job in Washington press. We had him where he's on committees that Dr. Roy would have to begin with and work up to, but I do believe that a doctor should would make a better doctor than he would a politician. Or ask Clarence Castor, a senior citizen who knows that Bob Dole has voted for every social security increase that's been put into law since he's been in the Senate. Until after I wrote, got this form from Senator Dole about our social security, if we got our increases, I just filled it out and said, I haven't got any yet. I don't think anybody else could done as quick as Senator Dole. I think he did a marvelous job. Right away, I got my check. Or ask Lieutenant Commander Charlie Plum, who will tell you that Bob Dole did an awful lot for a lot of young guys in Vietnam that never made the papers. Certainly proven that. Even though I was 10,000 miles from home, he was still back here representing me as a prisoner of war. And, and I wasn't the only one. You know, I read the paper every day where Dole has helped somebody else, a little guy. So I'm going to go to the poll and vote for him. <laughs> Bob Dole has come a long way from the football fields of Russell. He's on the Senate Budget Committee, the Summit Conference on Inflation, and next year, he'll be the number one Republican on the Ag Committee, which all simply means that to you, the voter and the taxpayer from Kansas, you'll have to go an awful long way, wait an awful long time before you'll ever have a Kansan in the position that Bob Dole is in. We can sum up these four and a half minutes on Bob Dole with one word, guts. But don't take our word for it. Take that long, hard look at Bob Dole, and then consider the alternative. On November 5th, vote for Kansas. Vote for a great American. Re-elect Senator Bob Dole.